the question it is given that the sphere reduction ratio is 25 so i dash is equal to 25 that is equal to n1 by n2 that is the ratio that is equal to d2 by d1 is equal to z2 by z1 this equation is given in base number 228 the speed of the pinion or the gear is given as n1 is equal to 600 rpm so we can convert that into rps by dividing it by 60 so we will be getting it to be 10 rps that is small n1 small n1 is 10 rps and the power is given as 35 kilowatt now we can calculate the value of n2 using the relationship i dash is equal to n1 by n2 n1 is 10 and we will be getting the value of n2 as 0.4 rps From table number 12.7 and uh, it was it is in page number 234 the material is selected for both the worm and the worm wheel or the pinion and the gear we are, we are selecting different materials two different materials we are selecting and uh, those two will be having different stress value that is a permissible stress value will be different for different materials for the worm we are selecting it to be C30 hardened steel heat treated steel and the value of the permissible stress is 220.6 mega pascal then for the worm wheel we are selecting a material that is phosphor bronze it is having a permissible value of around 80 mega pascal that we are labeling it as sigma d2 so 82.4 mega pascal these two values are in table 12.7 and uh, on page number 234 of our data book you can see that Here we are assuming that the worm as compared to the worm wheel, the worm wheel uh, will be wearing out earlier or it will be failing due to the sliding motion of the worm. So uh, the worm wheel is treated as a weaker material and hence it will be failing first. So our design will be based on the worm wheel or the gear. And we will be designing based on the worm wheel or the gear. So this is a uh, important thing which we have to note from here. The power is calculated using the formula and uh, we have uh, we have got the value of power but the power is calculated as per the worm, uh, worm gear drive and the power is calculated as 0 0.02905 a raised to 1.7 divided by i dash plus 5 that is given in equation number 
12.68 a and that is on page number 228 so here we can find out the value of a a is the center distance and we know the power that is uh, 35 kilowatt then i dash we know that is 25 and on substitution we will be, we'll be getting the value of a and that is the center distance The value of A is coming around 480 millimeter. Next, we are going to calculate the pitch diameter for the worm and the worm wheel. So the pitch diameter for the worm that is D1 is calculated using the relationship D1 is equal to A raised to 0.875 divided by 1.466 and that is given in equation 12.51A and that is on page number 223 and we have got the value of A. So on substitution, we will be getting directly the value of D1. So we have got the value of D1 as 155 mm. Now we can find out the value of D2 that is the pitch diameter of the warm gear and that we can uh, determine using the relationship A is equal to D1 plus D2 by 2 that is given in uh, page number 222 and the equation is 12.47A from there we can calculate the value of D2 because A and D1 we have already determined so we can obtain the value of D2 and it is coming around 805 mm. So next we can find out the module and for that we are using uh, the relationship Ft is equal to sigma d into Cv into B into Y into M that is uh, on uh, page number 222 equation number 12.53a you can see this relationship we have got the value of sigma d but we have to find out the value of Cv B capital Y and then we have to determine M from that. For that, uh, first we will be uh, finding out what is V. V is the uh, velocity and from that we have to uh, find out what, what will be the expression for CV. So V is equal to pi d2 n2 that is pi into uh, 0.805 that we are expressing in meter into n2. n2 that is in uh, small n2 that represents the revolution per second. And uh, that also we have calculated and on substitution we will be getting the value of V around uh, one point. 0, 1, 2, or we can take it to be 1 meter per second and based on that we will be getting the value of cv uh, and uh, the expression for cv we can take from equation 12.53 c page number 223 and the expression for cv is 6.1 divided by 6.1 plus v where v is uh, 1 uh, approximately and we will be getting the value of cv and it will be coming around Point, uh, 0.8578 uh, or approximately 0.86 next we have to find out the phase width that is B and that is given by the expression a raised to 0.875 divided by 2 
that is given in equation 12.64 and uh, that is in page number 227 we know the value of a that is center distance and from that we will be getting the value of b that is a phase width and uh, it is uh, around coming around to be 112 mm uh, so we can round it off to be 115 mm then we have to find out ft so we can find out ft using the uh, relationship that is torque is equal to force into uh, the radius and from there we can we know f is equal to torque by radius so we are using that relationship that is a basic relationship and for finding out ft uh, we can go to equation number 12.53d that is on page number 223 and we will be getting the expression for ft is equal to 2 into mt into kl divided by d2 where mt is the torque and the torque of the turning moment and kl uh, is the load factor that we are assuming here is, is to, it used to be 1 and uh, we can also find out the value of load factor from the table it is given in table 12.33 on page number 248 and we can use either uh, any of the values for kl based on our question but here we are assuming that the load factor is that is kl is 1 and on that assumption we can go for the calculation so before that we have to find out what is the value of mt or the moment or the torque for that we can use the basic relationship p is equal to 2 pi nd by 60 So we will be coming to the calculation of Ft after we are finding the value of Mt and for that we are going to use the, the standard equation P is equal to 2 pi nd by 60. So we are converting that n by capital N by 60 we are converting into you know, RPS. So here uh, we are uh, going to use the value of the pinion uh, not the gear wheel that is N2. So P that is 35 into 10 ratio 3 that we are expressing it in watts. 35 into 10 ratio 3 is equal to 2 into pi into N2 is point R, uh, uh, 0.4 RPS. So into 0.4 into MD. From there we will be getting the value of MDS. 13.493 into 10 raised to 3 Newton meter. We can express that in Newton millimeters 13.93 into 10 raised to 6 Newton millimeter. From table 12.28b, that is on page number 244, we can find out the number of threads in the worm using that table for uh, a value that, uh, that is for the gear reduction ratio if it is greater than 20 then we can assume that the value of Z1 or the number of threads in the worm to be 1 based on uh, it is given in the table 12.28b and it is on page number 228 from there we are assuming that Z1 is equal to 1 and uh, from table 12.27 and page 244 we know that for single thread is at one is equal to one and uh, pressure angle we have obtained at 14.5 degree and again from table 12.28 c uh, and that is on the same page number 244 and for pressure angle of 14.5 degree we are assuming or we are uh, taking the value of Lewis form factor Lewis form factor as 0.1 and here we are using capital Y for our calculation. So capital Y is equal to pi into small y. So capital Y is equal to pi into 0.1. And we are going to substitute all these values in the expression Ft is equal to 2 into mt into kl divided by d2. So on substitution we will be getting the value of Ft around 34.61 into 10 raised to 3 nota.
and then we are going to substitute that uh, ft value in the uh, expression that we have written earlier ft is equal to sigma d into cv into b into y into m and from there we are going to find out the value of module and uh, the value of module will be approximately equal to 13.5 mm so we have to standard the value of module and for that we are using uh, pay table 12.29 and it is on page number 246 we will be getting the value or the standard module as 16 mm so we are standardizing the module that is our next step and it is coming to be 16 mm Next, we have to find out the lead angle. For that, we can use the relationship tan gamma is equal to z one m2 by d1. That is on page number 221 and it is uh, equation number 12.46h. And from there, we will be getting the value of gamma. Gamma is the tan angle, uh, sorry, the lead angle. So, gamma is equal to tan inverse of z one m2 by d1. And we know the values of z one m1, m2 and d1. z one is 1 m2 is 16 and d1 is uh, 155 that we have already calculated and we will be getting the value of gamma that is the lead angle is 5.89 degree Next, we can find out the dynamic tooth load. The dynamic tooth load that is Fs is equal to Ft that is equal to sigma d into b into y into m. And that is uh, can be found out on page number 223, equation number 12.54. There we can obtain this relationship. It is in page number 223, equation 12.54. And from there, we will be getting the value of Fs or that is equal to Ft as 47.63 kilo newton. That is a dynamic tooth load. Next, we have to find out the wear tooth load. And then we have to go for the comparison between the wear load and the design load or uh, Fd that is a dynamic load. Sorry. So if FW is greater than FS, then the material will be safe for design or our design will be safe. So for that, we have found out FW. FW uh, is given us, it is given in the equation number 12.62a and that is in page number 227. And from there, we have found out uh, the value of FW that is equal to D2 into B into K. K is 0.54. 9 and uh, we have obtained uh, that value from table 12.30 page number 246 so substituting the value of k as 0.549 obtained from table 12.30 based on the gamma value we have found out fw and we have found out that fw is greater than fs and the material will be safe against wear that we have obtained and then uh, we are going to find out the value of efficiency so efficiency is given uh, by the formula eta is equal to cos theta minus mu into tan gamma divided by cos theta plus mu into cot gamma and that is on page number 225 that is equation number 12.57p and we are assuming that the worm is going to drive the worm gear and based on that assumption only 
we are getting this relationship if the warm gear is driving the warm the equation will be changing and for that we have to find out what is the value of theta so the relationship between theta alpha and gamma that we can obtain or that can be found on the page number 284 equation 12.56 d uh, that is tan theta is equal to tan alpha into cos gamma and alpha is 14.5 and gamma is 5.89 degree from there we will be getting the value of theta and it will be around 14.4 degree Theta is equal to the inverse of tan alpha into cos gamma and we have obtained the value of theta to be 14.43 degree and next we have to find out the value of theta sorry the coefficient of friction that is mu after finding theta then we have to find out the uh, other unknown value that is mu for finding out the efficiency so the mu for calculating mu we have to find out what is the velocity range for that we are calculating the velocity v is equal to pi dn by 60 and so here we are using pi d1 n1 by 1000 because we have converted d1 uh, that is we, we will be substituting d1 in this equation as millimeter and the n1 will be substituting in uh, rps so uh, we can just directly substitute those values here but we have to remember that d1 uh, is in millimeter and n1 it should be rps then only this equation will be giving the uh, correct value so we will be getting the velocity as 4.87 meter per second and for that range the value of coefficient of friction will be or the expression for the coefficient of friction will be mu is equal to 0 0.025 plus 3.281 dr divided by 1000 and that is uh, on page number 226 that is equation 12.60 b and from that we know uh, we should find out what is vr vr is a rubbing velocity so you can see here in this equation we have we need to find out what is vr so for finding out vr we are, that equation is found on again on this page number itself that is page number 226 you can find this relationship that is vr is equal to pi d1 n1 by 1000 into cos gamma so here we are, again we are substituting the value of d1 in millimeter and n1 in rps and uh, gamma is nothing but the lead angle and on substitution we will be getting the value of vr and it will be around 4.9 meter per second that is 4.89 meter per second and then we can find out the value of mu the value of mu will be we will be getting on a substitution of these values uh, that is we are on uh, we are on substitution we will be getting the value of coefficient of friction to be 0 0.0411 then we can go for uh, calculation of efficiency efficiency will be the value of efficiency on substitution we will be getting the value uh, on substitution of mu theta and gamma and uh, mu is nothing but 0 0.0411 and theta is nothing but 14.43 degree and gamma is 5.89 and on substitution we will be getting the value of efficiency and efficiency will be around 70 percentage that we will be getting here it will be uh, obtained as uh, 0.7054 and on converting it that into percentage we will be getting the value of efficiency to be 70.54 percentage next we will be finding out uh, the heat generation and the heat dissipated so heat generated can be found out using the expression qg is equal to mu into fn into vr divided by cos gamma and that is on page number 227 and that is equation 12.63a and for that we have to find out what is fn so fn we have to find out using the relationship fn is equal to ft divided by cos gamma 
into cos alpha. So for substituting of these values, we know the value of mu that is 0 0.0411 and we know the value of vr and also we know the value of cos gamma that is gamma lead angle. Then we have to find out what is fn. So fn is found out using the relationship fn is equal to ft divided by cos gamma into cos alpha. And uh, ft that we have calculated earlier then uh, we have obtained the value as 34.61 into 10 raised to 3 that is Newton. And uh, gamma is 5.89 and alpha is 14.5 that is the pressure angle and we will be getting the value of fn to be 35.9 kilo Newton. And on substitution of those values uh, in the expression for QG, we will be getting the heat generated. And uh, it will be uh, coming around 7.26 kilowatt. Next we have to find out the heat dissipated, this is a heat generated. Next we have to find out how much heat is going to be dissipated and uh, that is given on page number 227 equation 12.63b. So QD is equal to 1000 into kilowatt that is power into 1 minus efficiency. So on substitution of those values we will be getting QD is equal to 1000 into 35 into 1 minus 0 0.70 or 0 0.7054 and we will be getting the value of heat dissipated and that would be around 10.31 kilowatt so uh, from this value that is heat generated and heat dissipated we know that the heat generation is less compared to the heat dissipation so no artificial cooling is required the system will be cooling by itself so we don't need to or there is no need for introducing an artificial cooling system for the efficient working of our gear drive hence we can state that if qd since qd is greater than qg no artificial cooling is required for this case.